Hello, this is Allison with Breezy Blessings. And I got an order the other day, a, a custom order for a journal that would have a faux leather type finish for the cover. And so I thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead and make a tutorial on this treatment. And so just if anybody else is wondering, um, just I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of this. So. First of all, I'm starting with just craft paper um, cardstock. It's this particular cardstock, oops, sorry, is pretty thin, honestly. Um, I'll show you the tablet that I actually got it from. I got this from Joanne Fabrics, and it was in their kind of like their dollar, two dollar bin area. And so it um, comes five and a half by seven and a half. Um, inches long and I have trimmed these down to four and a half inches and still kept the seven and a half inches um, just to make a little bit more proportional um, journal so in fact you could even cut it down further to make a pretty close to like a TN size but for these purposes I'm gonna leave it this size so we've started with the craft paper and then we're gonna go I got Actually, the three bottles similar to this, it came with like two spray bottles and then this bottle. I got these at the Dollar Tree and it's just the perfect size to mix up the mixture to work on to make this malleable and um, workable. And so then you take glycerin, which I got this at CVS Pharmacy. Um, it's just, yeah, I didn't exactly know where to find it, but I had to ask and they point I made right to it so then you take it's not very expensive at all either I think this was like four dollars for this whole thing and it lasts forever because you only need about so I put maybe like a half an inch worth into this bottle and then fill the rest of it up with water and then just mix it up really well so the glycerin is kind of thickened it's been sitting in there you may see it like floating around so I'm just gonna Mix it up a little bit and then start working on my craft paper here. So one at a time, um, I'm going to work on this. And you may notice too, I'm working on, this is a cutting mat. You can get these two for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And I just love them because they're cheap and nothing sticks to them and you can leave a mess on it. You can see from a previous project um, from the same treatment. but. And it's not a big deal and then you can just replace it when it's time so anyways I'm gonna coat this coat the paper and then just literally massage it in and not only is it gonna work into the fibers of the craft paper itself but you're gonna get a hand treatment <laughs> because it'll make your hands nice and soft because of the glycerin. And you can see the paper is already starting to give a little bit as far as kind of curling up. And then you're just going to turn it and work a little bit more into it. Okay, until the entire surface is front and back is coated so you've got it so that it's not like drenching but it's still it's you know it's covered with that solution so now what we're going to do is we're going to just carefully fold it up and scrunch it here it's kind of squish so you shouldn't necessarily be squeezing anything out like dripping wise that just came off my hand but you're gonna feel it's kind of squish in your hand and then gently unball it and you'll see that it's already creating these beautiful creases in your cardstock in the craft paper itself so now we're gonna literally do it again Push it in, just work it in, and flip it a 
tiny bit more because there's some more already on the mat left over and then pick it up and it's time to squish it maybe purposefully squish it the other way like if you worked it this way work it this way this time so and unball it I personally find that this is enough times to give me the look that I want um, but you can work it as many times as you want to like that um, so for this particular thickness of cardstock I find that this is enough because um, I don't want to get it any more wet otherwise the fibers could really start to give way you want it just enough wetness so that you can actually put these creases into and it and it won't tear so anyways I'm going to um, go ahead and fast dry this and then I'm going to show you how to treat it with the inking that I do okay um, so now I actually, well, as you saw, I used my heat gun to dry it, and of course you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun, or um, if you don't have either, of course you can just let it dry naturally. Um, I have done that as well, and it took probably a good, well, it was about 24 hours until I really checked on it, so, but it was dry at that point and ready for the next step. So you'll just want to give it time um, to dry completely. So I have cleaned my surface up from the um, solution of glycerin and water and we're ready for the next step. Um, I do know that I want these corners rounded so I'm going to go ahead and do that prior to the treatment. So I'm going to give just a punch on that side and yes I have this super old um, creative memories punch. I actually just bought a new corner punch and I have not opened it yet. But this one is still very functional, so if, it, if the new one had not been 50% off, I probably wouldn't have gotten it because this one is still kicking. I haven't, had, I haven't even had to sharpen it, and I know for a fact that I've had it for about 20 years, which is crazy. So, anyways, all right, so let's do the ink treatment on this. Um, I know many, I've seen several um, demonstrations where something similar to this is done with distressing inks. So I do know that those work really well. However, I do not have them any, and while I've looked into making my own and probably eventually will, I have found personally great success with shoe polish. And so these are the two shoe polishes I use. Um, just picked them up from the drugstore. And so this is just regular brown and this is just regular black shoe polish. So we're gonna start with the brown. And then I just use regular makeup sponges. Um, and then again, you can use cotton balls or um, I, I do find that maybe cotton balls, the fibers would kind of break apart a little bit, but um, so we're gonna just go with this and we're just gonna rub it in. I'm, yeah, this one broke apart the entire shoe polish itself, but it still does the trick. In fact, I can even pick up a piece and just rub that into it and I've done that as before as well, so I may end up doing that. So, but we've got a little bit, and this is gonna kind of be subtle, but you'll see it start to kind of work into the fibers of the craft paper. So, you might other um, also note that the craft paper does dry quite a bit lighter than it looked when it was wet. So. Don't be disappointed by that because those creases and those lines are still there and it will pick up as you ink it with your inks. So you'll see it's starting to pick up there. Get it closer to the camera a little bit. So it's starting to pick up the different creases and just those fun lines that have formed. And so I'm just gonna go through this with the brown and then I'll come back with the black. So I'll fast forward through this part. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to the black. So now that we have it to this point, and you'll see that it's really picked up all of these little creases, and that the fibers themselves, you may notice that the fibers themselves are kind of like flaking off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it kind of gives it that um, actual true leather appearance as far as being a material instead of cardstock. So, and it is still flexible because of the glycerin that was built into the fibers. So. Um, yeah, so that's the point to what which I'm at on the front. I will continue by doing the back side as well as the other side of the cover. And um, then I will be back with the finished results of that. Okay, so now you notice that both pieces are here, both the front and the back, or however I want to do it. It could be flipped. Um, because they're both identical and I've done both sides. I've inked both sides with the shoe polish, both the brown and the black. And um, you'll notice that they're connected. So I've gone ahead and added the spine, um, which I made from the remaining cardstock from what I cut off from at the beginning. Um, so you'll remember I it was originally seven and a half inches yeah, tall and five and a half inches across and I cut off an inch of the cardstock. So I've been able to use one on what will be the inside of the journal and one on what will be the outside of the journal. So I used um, just regular glue, well, Aileen's um, craft glue, all purpose to, and I put on pretty decent sized beads of glue down the sides and put the journal covers themselves onto it. And then I put um, the exact same size piece of cardstock on the inside, what will be the inside of the journal cover. And now what I'm gonna do, oh, I, um, also I ink these up a little bit with the shoe polish, as you can see. So they're just, I didn't actually work the glycerin into them and the water like we did the covers, but it is inked up to match. So I that's all preferential. You could definitely do the same treatment on those and then attach them. Personally, I like making it look like a solid cover. So this is pretty well glued on at this point, but still wet. Um, so now what I've done is I've taken my um, bone folder and I've scored right in the center here where the um, covers meet like where they stop in the center if that makes sense so leaving and it I'll try to get it a little bit closer leaving um, just that center part where it connects so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently start working that fold now remember the glue is still a little bit wet, so you do want to be gentle with it, but you don't want it to dry so much that it's completely flat and then starts to crack when you fold it from the glue drying. So that side's coming along pretty nicely. And then we're gonna work this side. And just put it right there on that crease and start folding it up towards the bone folder. Everyone has a different method of doing this, but I find that the bone folder really comes in handy for this. Okay. So now we've got both folds pretty well formed so that there's still a little bit of glue spitting up the top or bottom there so that it is now a book cover. 
a journal cover there. So um, you'll notice that this is still pretty flexible and also definitely I'm getting some a little bit of shoe polish on me but um, so you'll want to seal this. I use um, gloss Mod Podge to do this. You can buy the antique Mod Podge or um, also the matte. They have different kinds. I personally like the gloss finish on this particular treatment so that it just kind of gives that kind of glossy leather appearance. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And in order to do that, I'm just going to kind of lay it like this and then do one side and then I'll have to let that dry and then do the other side. So. Okay, so yet again I did the no patience trying method and you'll see that it just has that nice glossy appearance it's still a little bit warm of course um, and so it makes it a tiny bit sticky but it's already completely dry and um, yeah it just has a really nice kind of lustrous leather appearance that um, it's just gonna make a really cool journal cover it's also kind of still uh, malleable and it stays that way actually um, in other journals I find that the best thing to do is to back um, the inside with another piece of cardstock and then actually kind of sew it in um, so just sew it through so that if you want a firm cover you know what I mean it's just so that it doesn't um, end up so floppy. However, if you like to just kind of like the floppy thing that you could just tie around with twine or string, then that works really quite well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the Mod Podge on the inside as well and then do a fast try of that. So I will come back with the finished product. Okay, so here we go. This is the um, finished product for the cover itself. And like I said, I will probably back the inside with a thicker cardstock, just out of here, and sew it on its edges. So I'm quite pleased with it. And I just, I hope that you've maybe taken a couple tips that maybe you can incorporate into some of your journal covers. And um, you know what, I'm gonna show you one real quickly that is actually around a journal. Um, I've done a previous flip through of this one and this one's the same outside treatment with the glycerin water and the um, sure the shoe polish however then I use a little bit of purple ink on this one as well as embossing it with an embossing plate so sometime I will go ahead and do that treatment as well you know, including the embossing, but for this particular time, I just wanted to do a plain leather look. But you can see that both of them just have that shine and um, that, that just dark leather appearance. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.